with that in mind, I'm going to tweet this out over here. If you want to invite people to this stream, you're welcome to. I want these to be sort of an open conversation. So with that in mind, um, the war on drugs is a war on us. Uh, I, I wanted this stream because basically there's like always, always in this libertarian cycle, some chuckle fuck rightoid who decides that libertarianism is in fact anti-drug and usually those are the same kinds of people that um that will ha post like fall of rome images and you know fucking talk about oh this is going to be the, the the fall of our civilization and it enables all these blah blah um maybe but first off if you're going to act, like tell me as a libertarian as an anarchist that something uh, might cause the fall of an empire, understand first that that is the opposite message to get me to dislike it. It's not going to be fruitful. If you, if you want to get me on your side and you say, this thing that I want to stop will cause the fall of an empire, that's going to be a no from me. Um, you, you shouldn't stop that. The empire should fall. Um, because fuck empire. But, like, secondarily, um, the general vibe that I want to give off with this conversation is that not only are these things, like, counterproductive, but they're also um, actively anti-libertarian. Um, because there have been so many libertarians, this uh, cycle especially, cucking to the right. Being absolutely cucked to the right. Um, and saying that, you know, all the right's talking points are reasonable and we should, you know, accept them and welcome them with open arms uh, as the statists they are, including that drugs should remain illegal and that anybody who pushes for their legalization is part of the problem and should be laughed out of the room. Um, this is evil, but there's a lot of it. And uh, so to get this started, uh, let's get uh, uh, tro Tropical Regicide uh, to speak here. I tagged some folks who were involved in a thread where the Libertarian Party uh, quote tweeted a, um, a tweet by Wall Street Silver where they were actively lying about a group in Canada. And the group in Canada um, was like doing illegal things, but they were buying drugs off the dark web and using those, like getting those drugs tested uh, for safety before then reselling them to drug users to make sure that if they're using drugs, those drugs are, like, not going to additionally kill them or harm them or whatever. Um, and this upsets right-wingers because they're evil. Um, because they're, they're not considering the benefits of harm reduction. They're not considering the at least authoritarian right-wingers are not considering the potential benefits to actually having some oversight in this regard. And these people, literally, that's what they wrote on the package is the results of the drug testing. It says, uh, no buff, not cut. Um, that's a good thing, actually. Um, and anyone who doesn't think so, anyone who, does, who, who says that they're doing this, like keeping these things illegal so that they can keep people safe, um, who doesn't want these drugs themselves to be safe, uh, and is therefore willing to use the government against people who are ensuring that, is a monstrous ghoul. Because these sorts of people uh, are actively blocking people from being healthier. Um, and the only sources that they will then have for their addictions are the unsafe like sources. I mean, I'm not saying that there's a such thing as safe meth use, but, like, if you're going to get it, you should probably not get it from a source that's, like, you know, back alley, fucking, um, like, that guy who just makes it crank out of, like, you know, the lowest quality shake and bake. Like, we're talking the choice between life and death in a lot of these cases. Um, and so when these people, like in the comments, some of them 
alleged libertarians say that they want um, these things to remain illegal, what they're really saying is that they don't actually care about the health of users. They just want the users to get fucked because they see them as lesser, often subhuman. Um, and that's evil. So I, I wanted to get this, uh, this person on. I sent you an invite to speak. You are free to accept that invite. It should be a thing in your app. I don't know. I'm very new to this. Um, and I also think the interface sucks and isn't as effective as it could be. But, like, you know, beyond that, like, uh, yeah. Um, I saw a bunch of bullshit in the, uh, in the, uh, replies to that tweet. I saw a bunch of bullshit in the quote tweets. And I thought this would be a good thing to do. Like, so, the first tweet was Wall Street Silver, um saying that you could legally just go to a store and buy this shit, like, off the shelf. And not only is that false, but it's actively damaging to what the real efforts are, which are, like, these people actively know users who are trying to get clean and who want the safer product while they wean themselves off. That's the point of these centers. That's the point of these efforts. The point is to sort of take that burden off. So uh, with that in mind, uh, the lies that Wall Street Silver told uh, sort of incentivized me to get this going. Uh, I think you have your uh, your speakership enabled there, uh, top, Tropical yeah. Regicide. So uh, feel free to let yeah, people know. Yeah, can you who hear you, me? Yeah, feel free to let people know who you are and, uh, and uh, what your stance is on that post. All right. Hey, yeah, uh, everybody, I'm Tropical Regicide. AK Tropical Tyrannicide. Um, and I'd like to thank you for inviting me and creating this space. I'm happy to be here. And um, the first thing I wanna I wanna talk about is is yeah, they did lie. Um, and a, a big misconception people have is that the end goal should be decriminalization whereas the actual end goal should be legalization because with decriminalization you still have a black market you mm -hmm. still have um uh bad quality stuff being passed around for from individuals uh yeah. legalization is where you'd get better results from. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that. Um, but even with decriminalization, we do see good results. Um, you know, and it, a lot of it's just common sense. You know, you have less arrests. That's less r r wasted resources. Um, and we see serious crime reduced um, in the absence of drug prohibition by 25% uh, in Portugal because cops can go after real criminals. You know, yeah. it's doing a disservice to victims of assault by having cops waste their time going after somebody using a substance. Yeah, and, like, not only that, but, like, so, a key driving factor behind the militarization of police is the ability to raid drug spaces, and this has led to a significant uptick in the amount of military hardware that has been passed down to police. So, police have been able to present themselves as a much more, like, cohesive and anti-liberty force because, you know, if, if, if they want to get rid of your guns, they're going to have to come with their own. So you might as well also bring an armored personnel carrier. You might as well also bring an MRAP. They have, like, offshoot bear cats that they hand to cops like candy. Um, and so, like, they do this for the purposes of making the police a bigger presence, and they use drugs as an excuse. And not to mention that, but while they do it, um, these cops are often training in foreign exchange programs with, like, literally uh, Israeli, like, the ID IDF, you know, 
they're training with these people because they're training to become soldiers on the streets of the U.S. That's one of the reasons the U.S. enables the government of Israel, no matter how genocidal they become. It's because they, like, want these people to train cops. And they don't train cops in humanitarian aid. They don't train them in de-escalation. They train them in mass escalation and, you know, treating the common person in America exactly like they treat uh, the Palestinian people. Um, and that's really fucking bad for anybody who doesn't know how they treat the Palestinian people. So uh, it's one of those things where it's like all of this is wrapped up in itself. All of this is creating the ripe environment for, like, oppression. And it's, like, it's not just like that. It's also, like, you know, so Portugal, you've got lower crime. You've got lowered addiction. You've got people finally being able to get off of it because they're not, like, going to the same pushers. They're going to safe and ethical centers and shit like that. If this place was legal, which it's not, um, this drug user liberation front was legal, um, it would not, in fact, be a fucking problem. Um, like, because they would be, like, safe. The drugs that aren't safe are the ones that are the problem. The going to the pusher who's gonna get you hooked on bad smack that's maybe cut with other drugs so they can expand their portfolio, that is not a preferable alternative, you know? So when these people pretend that they give a shit, they don't fucking give a shit. What they care about is their profits. What they care about is their power. They don't care about the common person. They don't care about health. So I'm, I, you're interested in this subject. What, what got you passionate like about this particular topic? Um... Well, growing up in a really bad neighborhood, being, uh, seeing, you know, I even saw my neighbor get killed, um, over it. So growing up in a terrible neighborhood, seeing all these kind of things, um, I, I knew it wasn't right, you know, to arrest somebody that was already homeless over, some crack rock in their pocket it was it was ridiculous and i saw how all the all the most awful people in the neighborhood uh were that were willing to sell uh you know drugs and whatnot automatically became the most successful and it perpetuates crime you have everybody idolizing drug dealers that are killing over competition mm -hmm. and it just it's it really just destroys communities to have these type of things illegal um and then even um with hiv it with portugal it in only seven years after decriminalization their hiv rates went from a hundred thousand to twenty five thousand this is because now they don't ha they're not forced to share needles mm -hmm. they have availability to needles so you see hiv rates go down yeah and it like and not just that but like also a host of other diseases it's somehow some way um, you know, this is a wild concept. When you don't force people underground to do their drugs in seedy dens, maybe that might make them healthier. Who, who'd have thought? <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So, so you had you had friends that were caught up in this. If you don't mind me asking, like, what was the nature of that? Um. Well. When, when I was young, I saw my neighbor get shot right in his front yard um, because the police came um, to bust him, and he was already outside. Um, and I don't know if I was young. I don't know if he actually had something in his hand 
or if they just said he did, but yeah, he got, he was killed. Um, and then, I mean, just looking back on it, all my, my friends I grew up with, half of them are either um, in jail for something related to drugs um, or something that would happen in the black market. And that black market's only only there because it's it's all illegal. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. And even uh, even the the drug use in children dropped in Portugal. Um, from I, let me see, it says twenty seven to twenty one percent after it became uh, decriminalized. You, when it becomes legalized, though, then you have third party quality testing that's now available. You have competition. It's just like anything else. And one thing a lot of people don't ever want to mention is it would be good for the economy. I mean, there's entire countries in South America whose entire economy is funded by selling drugs. I mean, bring. Bring that manufacturing here. Let us manufacture it and sell it here. Um, it'll be more humane. You won't see all these gangs springing up. It's just and, all around and net positive. Yeah, and, and like the, the other half of it that I think uh, is is like pretty a pretty stark way to describe all of these problems is that the U.S. And this is something I talked about with Ann Cat Bear, with whom you're familiar. The U.S. Yeah. fucks up other countries. It fucks them up. Um, and then when they have refugees fleeing those fucked up countries and then coming across the border here, a lot of Americans cry about self-defense. And they, they, you know, herald Texan secession. And they, like, form this, like, movement around this asinine garbage where suddenly... Uh, like, and this is not just like, you know, dyed in the wool authoritarian right wing in label people. This is people who identify as libertarian. And pardon me if I don't think that libertarians slash anarchists can call uh, throwing families into razor wire self-defense. But like the families would be, you know, staying in their home countries if their home countries weren't destroyed. And one of the reasons that they're destroyed is the gang violence, the cartels, the all that. There is a demonstrable and verifiable, reliably repeatable link between cartel violence and existence and the, um, the, 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 the criminalization uh, of drugs. Because they have a market because they're already a gang and they, you know, their, their goal is to take over blocks. And so... They're doing illegal shit already. They use drugs to rope people into the illegal shit, and they use it to keep people, uh, keep neighborhoods controlled because you gotta get your fix again. And so th they're all affiliated, like with this general like culture of illegality, and that is what self fuels the problem. Um, but people don't want to admit that they don't want to like, especially right libertarians you all of all people should know demand side economics says that the people who have this um like this addiction uh don't have it out of nowhere and the people who provide the drugs don't do it in a vacuum but for some reason these people are incredibly incredibly stupid and i think it's because or evil and i think it's because either they were part of a libertarian movement that got hijacked, or they are some of the hijackers of libertarian movements. Do you, do you have anybody that you might think about in that regard? Um, I I really have not come across very many libertarians that were for the war on drugs. I mean, thinking back in history, I know that that one candidate was. Um, what was his name? Uh, something Johnson. Gary. Or, Gary Johnson. Yeah, he was. He he wasn't for legalizing 
um, all drugs. Mm-hmm. And but besides that, I mean, there is that one silly anarchist that was that was highlighted today that that said it was good. But I mean, think about why why it became illegal in the first place and why it remains legal today. It's not because of the spirit of the people. It's not because people actually want it to become illegal. It became illegal because of the government propaganda. That's what got everybody to believe it should remain illegal. And even in Florida today, we see prison guard unions being the main lobbyists to keep it illegal. Um, it, 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 it fills up the prison space, which is good if you can profit off of it. But it's bad for literally all of society to do things like that. And, um, yeah. So, you've never had experience with anybody of that regard? Because... Not a libertarian, but non-libertarians, oh yeah. Well, one thing I can tell you is that a lot of them are willing to... Uh, make compromises because they hate the left more than they love liberty. And uh, one one such example is Javier Malay and all of the stupid Malay supporters. And I do mean they're oh, all... Oh, that is a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Because Javier Malay gets elected on an anarcho-capitalist platform, allegedly. Um, I'm, I'm saying allegedly because anybody who actually read his platform would know he's not anarcho-anything, but his supporters are very stupid. So they don't care about that. Like they, they, they never supported any sort of principle. They just wanted their like their their fucking anti-leftist candidate who's as rude to left left leaning people as they are. They wanted to feel like reified by somebody in political office, which says everything about them. Um, so with that in mind, like people who libertarians support Malay. Uh, and Pinochet both waged wars on drugs. And one of the things that Malay did when he got in office was he put in Patricia Bullrich, who, uh, like, she was already a war on drugs chick, and he heavily criticized her for, you know, enabling the state. And then who is one of the first people he thinks of to be one of his czars? It's Patricia Bullrich. And he puts her in place, and she immediately says she's going to wage a war on drugs. And all these libertarian, like, allegedly Javier Malay supporters, they didn't say shit. In fact, some of them said that it's totally justified and reasonable, or said that, you know, oh, well, you're, you're just mad because you can't do drugs. And, like, I encountered so many of these fucking people, um, because I yeah, went against Yeah, I'll be Malay. the first to admit... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you know, hey, this I've been talking a lot. This is about a conversation. No, I just, I just uh, got excited because I I wanted to say that I was the first to admit. I'm the first to admit that that I supported Javier Malay at first. I really liked him, um, but and I was hopeful, but that hope did fade once I saw. Um, that, like, you could you can argue to a degree that economically he's libertarian in some regards, but um, no, he he's authoritarian, and, and and like you said, too many people are willing to be authoritarian or support authoritarianism in order to dunk on the left. Um, which, I mean, just like uh, Marcus Aurelius says, you know, you, the best revenge is is not to be like your enemy. Um, so that, that's never a good thing to do. Uh, he's he's done a, in terms of socially. He's there's no way anybody can argue he's a libertarian. Socially, he's not. When and the great thing is that economically, he's not either. Because, like, okay, so you get into the, and, and like, I'll make this short, because that's not what this is about, but 
Like, he, he wants to install a facial recognition super state. He wants to enable a prison industrial complex. He wants to make it easier to lock people up, um, especially minors. He wants, uh, he, he already criminalized maskless protests, and since open carrying with guns was already illegal, people would carry sticks, you know, to, to protest with, and he banned that. If you carry a stick there, you can be arrested. And if you uh, protest in, in a way that blocks anything at all, you can be charged. And if you wear a mask, you can be arrested and then charged because uh, you covered your face so they couldn't scan it with their facial recognition technology. And, you know, this all happened at the same time as he was also, um, like, s directly supporting um, the sort of militarized transition um, so that he could have these cops on the ground for when he did the halving of the peso value. And the halving of the peso value was concurrent with the acceptance of foreign currency for contracts. And what that means is that effectively, uh, you can charge, uh, like, double previous rent, uh, bec like, because you can charge in dollars against rent that was taken out in halved pesos. And so, like, all of this, if Biden did the same stuff Malay is doing here, right away, the libertarians would call it communism. Um, they, they, because they don't know the difference between communism and any sort of statism. Um, you know, so I'm not saying all of them, just to be clear, uh, but the ones who supported Malay, they would call what Malay is doing communism if it happened in america and while he's doing that he's also like pushing to abolish the central bank there which a lot of right libertarians are saying oh that's such a victory but if he's doing that while also pushing the argentinian economy onto the you know the u.s dollar through dollarization then what he's really doing is he's attaching that economy to the biggest central bank and in order to do that, you have to pay them a huge amount of seniorage, which means he's not only attaching it to the U.S. economy and therefore to U.S. interests, which is one of the reasons that he's chumming it up with Israel and the Vatican now. Um, but it also means that he's giving the U.S. central bank a massive payday. And uh, anybody worth their salt in libertarian circles, especially American libertarian circles, should oppose this, but they don't. Because really, when they say end the Fed, what they really mean is, this is my shorthand for saying the bankers are a problem without actually solving that problem. Um, like, so even economically, he's very, very anti-libertarian. Um, and leashing your government to the government of a foreign country is globalism. These people are often nationalists who support Malay, but they're globalists as soon as Malay is leashing his economy to like international lending associations like the IMF and World Bank and uh, the US Central Bank and their like foreign policy with regards to like Israel and the Vatican and all this shit. So it's like, you know, in the end run of it, like he's not even economically viable as a libertarian. Like he's economically and socially just fascist. The fact that he's cutting certain social programs so that the poorest among the, uh, among him uh, can't fight back because they don't have the economic means to survive week to week, much less fight him. Um, the fact that he's doing that instead of actually liberating the economy um, is fascism. There's nothing else that you can call it. So... Even then, like, I hate Malay. I hate anyone who still supports Malay. I, I want them to see the light, but I doubt they will because they're too busy jacking off about the shit left. Uh, I had to say that, but <laughs> back on track. Yeah, that's a really good point, and I'm not one to try to double down. You know, I'll, I'll be the first to change my mind with, when presented with, you know, new good information and that's definitely uh some some good information there that can refute any any claim that he's uh economically 
libertarian. Um, uh, when I, I just said like, uh, in some regards, Oh yeah. um, but, and, and, and yeah, in some regards, yeah, he's done some libertarian things, but just like you said, uh, a lot of other things he's done, if they were done here, he'd be called a commie real quick. So, um, there's not really anything that you said I, I, I disagree with. Ima- um, imagine the Republican backlash if Biden said, all you J6 protesters who blocked up the Capitol and broke our windows and shit, we're going to fine each of you an amount of money. I- imagine how they would respond. All these libertarians who've been like, you know, oh, we got to stand with the J6 protesters. This is about precedent and principle. Imagine just for a second. I I think that they would blow their shit. I think that they would not tolerate that for a second because it's coming from a Democrat. It's the same thing. It's the same principle, but it's coming from a Democrat and it's like applied to right wingers. So these unprincipled hacks would probably have no problem co-signing it. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's uh, if it's a fine, or if it's just taking away somebody's uh welfare or something like that even if it was any taking away government privileges um if you're taking away government anything it needs to you know equality is important it needs to be across the board eliminate it for everybody not just for your political opponents well yeah and and like that's the other like half of it is that like um (laughs) like these people Oh, we hate blocking, you know, traffic. We hate that. Don't block the roadways unless you're one of the tractor protesters, unless you're the trucker protesters, unless you're the uh the 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 MAGA protesters or the Patriot Front or J6 or any of the other ones that are right wing and authoritarian and do this shit all the time that they have been supporting for years. It's like we we see you. But that's like, yeah, that's a, that's another good point. Yeah, it's like, you know, fucking it, it brings it back because like the war on drugs is a lot like this. It's also like the war on guns. Prohibition uh, was like carefully curated to like create the environment uh, where the right, the authoritarian right could crack down on the left and stop social movements they didn't like. Um, Because the Black Panthers started to open carry, so they they made a lot of gun control legislation. Reagan, with his famous anti-handgun legislation, um, like the the, uh, original National Firearms Act um, being co-sponsored by rightoids, the... Uh, like subsequent National Firearm a- Firearms Act being assisted in drafts of legislation by the literal NRA because black people were open carrying and that scared these people because they wanted their like particular form of power. So like they they were all about guns until it came time for equal gun rights. And in the same way, they they were also about like, you know, freedom, you know, from from government constraint until it came to, like, allowing subversive culture. And drugs helped with subversive culture. They broke people's minds out of certain paradigms and they helped them see things a different way. And we can't have that becoming the norm in a fascist society that we want to control. So, like, ultimately, uh, these people... Uh, started to criminalize drugs so that they could go against uh, their political opponents in that way as well. The left, the progressives, the people who might take some dives at, you know, fucking honestly white power. Like, trying to, you know, pick away at the structures that they had been building for a long time. You can't have that. So, like, David Duke... Uh, affiliated people like the kinds of paleo cons that late Rothbard was latching onto the kinds of like authoritarian right wingers that a lot of alleged libertarians love. Those are the people that like, you know, were behind a lot of drug policy behind a lot of gun policy. And then you get like 
Afghanistan, you know, and all these wars uh, relating to the, the drug trade, like Afghanistan, Taliban was given $53 million before 9-11, like right before it, a few months. And people just forgot about that. And why were they given it? To criminalize opium. And what did they do? They done did criminalized it, but then they rounded up all the opium, had a big store of it, and used the opium that they that they stored up uh, to sell at a massive markup because nobody could legally buy it. Um, and so they, 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 they created their own black market run by the literal government um, and muscled that stuff out. Exports spiked, and they became the chief exporter of opium in the region to the extent that when the war in Afghanistan was happening, sometimes uh, fucking U.S. soldiers would be guarding opium fields. You know, and then the Iran Contra affair, like let's enable a drug gang in, in in order to do a hostage exchange. Like it's it's just a giant clusterfuck, especially since the CIA then used like a bunch of fucking cocaine that they personally imported into the inner cities to justify a massive uptick in policing. And then that's where you get Biden, who said, you know, well, we can't like anybody with a dime of crack on them is going to go to jail that's what gets him to be able to say that while then also not sending his son to jail uh when his son is caught with a lot more than a dime's worth of crack oh yeah <laughs> so it's one of those things it's one of those things yeah and, and, and like you had mentioned how the right will claim to to value freedom that's probably one of the most fury infuriating things they're like especially here in florida they claim to desantis will claim to value freedom while at the same time passing anti-protest bills banning uh thca and other cannabinoids Uh that are are currently legal um and then He'll claim to value liberty and his reasoning for having marijuana or cannabis illegal is his quote, it smells bad. That's that's why it's yep. illegal, because it smells bad. Not not it's like he, he doesn't care, you know, that this that keeping it illegal clogs up the court system it destroys the justice system people go to jail and they end up getting worse off you know it's not re- rehabilitating anybody mm-hmm. yeah and you know then you get right away fucks like joe rogan who were huge desantis supporters and didn't look into him at all and then like joe rogan is over here like supporting desantis who literally just gave cops paydays. He gave cops a shit ton of money just for being cops. He said so. And then he also said that if you didn't destroy protests, if you didn't round people up and beat the fuck out of them, if you didn't quell it fast enough, your department would lose funding. Meaning that if Florida, like, if anyone in Florida does not do a good enough job at suppressing people's freedom, uh their police will be, like, defunded. What does that do? It creates a massive incentive structure for cops to fuck people up. And then, you know, what What do you know? A, a bunch of cops fucked people up. <laughs> and so it's one of those things where, like, Joe Rogan gets to support this guy after he did all this, after he, you know, went to war with Disney because of... The, the insane atrocity of not being a bigot. Um, and the, he did all this uh, while also being an anti-drug motherfucker and originally starting the, the pandemic off with some of the harshest anti-freedom, pro-lockdown measures in the country. Um, literally telling people the party is over, Spring Breakers, go home or you'll be fined and locked up and shit. And like... This guy then added on top of all of that that he doesn't think uh, anything relating to weed should be legal because it smells bad. And Joe Rogan, the stoner, 
who's been belching right wing propaganda for like years now, um, has no problem hopping on pop until he figures that out. And then at that point, he's given temporary pause until he, you know, jumps back on the run. So it's fucking exhausting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. It goes back on what I said, what I was saying, man. These people, they are be authoritarians just to own the left. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're turning into their enemies just to spite them. And it's it's crazy, man. It's for forty one billion a year is wasted fighting the drug uh, war on drugs. Forty one billion. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And like the the worst part I think of all of this is that this is the impression a lot of people get about libertarians. They get this impression because they're told by their right-wing fucking circle jerk that this is the way, uh, like, libertarians are. That libertarians have no problem endorsing people like, you know, fucking DeSantis. That libertarians have no problem endorsing people like Vivek Ramaswamy, who, you know, said that he wanted to literally invade Mexico and militarize the border so that he could attack the cartels. Um, that guy is called a libertarian by a bunch of libertarians who tried to get him to call himself a libertarian and run on the presidential ticket as a libertarian because these people are sellout hacks. Yeah, and, and, and now we have libertarians crying to have RFK run as a libertarian. <laughs> so it's yep. like, it's it's coming from both sides. It's ridiculous people are so quick to throw away their principles and they wonder why people have misconceptions about the libertarian party yeah and and like you know i'll be i'll be releasing a video response soon like the libertarian party just came out the other day and felt like the twitter account for it fully endorsed ai why the fuck does libertarian party have anything to say about ai why would it not take a neutral stance, if anything, like, or a negative one, if they were being honest about all of its potential negative consequences? Like, um, the, the idea of the Libertarian Party coming out and saying the Libertarian Party fully endorses AI? Bitch, where? There are plenty of Libertarians that don't. But, like, the Libertarian Party does not speak for Libertarians, so they're totally fine, for instance, in this case, full-throatedly boosting and endorsing the idea that Canada is just selling free drugs legally. They're not, but the Libertarian Party just said good. They didn't look into it at all to find out whether or not maybe that was fucking bullshit. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's sad that they're not willing to do their their own research before, you know, endorsing a lie. Yeah. And like that's the thing, like these these people have worked their way into the ecosystem of a lot of these big right wing accounts, and when they do things like this, they get support from some of those right wing accounts. Um, that's the reason they're all on this this anti-woke grift, this culture war nonsense, um, which is directly tied to the same sorts of trad, uh, you know, coded people who, like, you know, claim Catholicism and Christianity and all this shit, and then the next breath talk about how 16-year-olds are hot or adults or whatever. Um, you know, it's these people have significant problems with their ecosystem and like right libertarians have been cozying up to them. Like I made this entire video that I'll be making a part two about um, relatively soon where I really laid into all of this shit. Um, and it's not even just that. It's also a bunch of other stuff like, you know, fucking my point in bringing this up is that we need to remind libertarians that, yes, the war on drugs is a war on us. Every single piece of police state tyranny you experience is at least partially related to the war on drugs. Ask Radley Balco about why cops were militarized. He has a whole book about it. He has a whole book, and like Michael Bloomberg, a huge donor to Biden, the guy who wrote the anti-drug crime bill, um, 
that guy who these people you know were complaining about four years ago and sounding more and more like by the day mike bloomberg uh saying that you know fucking he would just xerox a description of black and brown people in inner cities and throw them against the wall that is who we're talking about you know um Mike Bloomberg donated 45, I think it was 45 million, if I remember correctly. I might be full of shit. It might have been like the 24 million one. I'll look it up before the thing is over. But like, basically, he donated a huge amount to the Biden campaign's advertising budget. He likes Biden because Biden helped him wage a war on drugs. And Biden's war on drugs helped a huge amount of problems in terms of systemic brutality and oppression that libertarians should oppose. But for some reason, like, for some reason, they're willing to sound more and more like these people by the day and support people like Ramaswamy, support people like RFK, support people like, you know, fucking, uh, like, like, <laughs> Andrew Tate, a groomer pedophile sex trafficker, you know, all these people who, like, you know, don't like drugs and say that, oh, yeah, it's degeneracy, so you should, um, we should prosecute it. You know, it's not a problem that the police are taking out the trash, that, that, that they cleaned up San Francisco. Like, no, in fact, it is a problem, you know? Right, yeah, it, it definitely... You know, and and it's a it's a moral thing if they're trying to be you know righteous and actually right with God, then the moral thing is not to use violence to lock people up mm. over a substance. You know, the moral thing is is live and let live, not force people to have your morals with the threat of violence. For sure. And like, you know, and that's, that's like half of it, you know, it's like, the, these people, like, so many of them were quick to hop on board the uh, Lakewood Shooters trans narrative. When that was a, an alias that this assigned female at birth woman who mothered her own child uh, and never identified as a man, um, she was a Nazi. Uh, and she had swastikas displayed for everyone in her neighborhood to see. And she would routinely threaten them and install cameras to spy on them and seek Heil at them and blare music at them, often for a racial purpose. Um, and she was a Nazi. But these people don't want to acknowledge the fact that right-wing violence was a thing there, so they'll call it trans violence. And it's the same kind of people that did that that are saying things like, you know, no, in fact, we can... Uh, draw the line on drugs and unleash the cops on drug users. And there was a whole thing a while back about like, you know, uh, if if you see a, a homeless person uh, doing drugs in a public like library or park or whatever, are you like, would it be a bad thing to call the cops on that person? Um, and a whole bunch of alleged libertarians said it wouldn't be a bad thing because like Dave Smith. Yeah. Because it's a public health issue. No, it's not. It's it's that guy's mental health issue. This is the result of that. And you're not going to solve that by putting him in jail. But you, you will give the jail system another person to prosecute. You will give the government more excuses to steal more money and buy more equipment to oppress us more. That's what you'll do. But libertarians anti-government word uh, don't tread on me blah 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 but you can tread on that guy because i don't like him go fuck yourself yeah liberty means liberty for all not just some if it's selective liberty then it's not liberty for sure yeah um and just understanding like as i've been talking most of this time like if, if you if you've got anything you want to say feel free no, I I had a, a bunch of points that I that I've had memorized um that I, I pretty much got out in terms of uh why drug legalization needs to happen and why the drug war 
has been a complete failure. I mean, we have more drugs now than ever, especially like we look at Philadelphia. Philadelphia is owned by the Mexican cartel. Mm. And just like, think about that for a second. How is a Mexican cartel gang owning a city in, you know, the top of the United States? Well, now that they have this stuff called Trank out, they use um, this like uh, veterinary tranquilizer out. Um, they mix it with fentanyl and people will get high on that and it it destroy it destroys everything. But the the one thing about it is now um the Chinese you can buy it directly from China. So if you're caught buying it directly from China instead of a authorized cartel dealer, then a hit is put out on you. Um so it's just it's just like baffles your mind to see how how badly the war on drugs has failed and it's just uh it's blatant it's the examples right here in front of our eyes you know we can look at philadelphia you go to philadelphia it's just zombies and it's owned by a criminal enterprise i'm not talking about the federal government yeah yeah and that's the thing like not only so not only do you get that but you get the pretext for policing in the form of civil asset forfeiture you get the pretext for policing in 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 the form of constitution free zones because my border like two-thirds of americans live within like a hundred miles of the border and that's the constitution free zone that has not been abolished by any president but what it does is it means that your rights are basically null and void in that strip of land. And since most Americans live in that strip of land, your liberties are fucked. But so many of these people have no problem with, like, my border and are enabling people like Vivek, who's complete border bitch, like, World Economic Forum kind of, George Soros kind of, you know, we've got a fight for like certain elements of our nationalism in order to uh keep people on the program kind of fucking conservative trash like th this sort of like fervor stirring is only designed to push people onto certain predefined predetermined um like you know pathways and as a result you get people like Vivek who want to invade Mexico being called libertarians because he's going to stop the cartels. But instead of doing that, if the U.S. just stopped the war on drugs, if the U.S. stopped these constitution-free zones where the police can arbitrarily fuck with you, if the U.S. stopped all these like measures that they take in order to force their views, um, then the U.S. would not only have a bigger budget and more freedom, but better like better responses to cartels instead what you've got is police who basically steal for a living um like both in terms of getting their paycheck and also in terms of um of civil asset forfeiture and shit like that running places like gangs and then occasionally these police will just actually call themselves a gang there will be gangs in the police department running certain blocks, certain areas. The LAPD's full of them. Chicago PD's full of them. Like, running torture sites at some points. Like, literal warehouses. Um, fucking... This is normal now, and it's largely due to the war on drugs. But a lot of alleged libertarians would rather suck off the right than admit that maybe the left isn't the boogeyman that they should be concerned about, and the state is. Yeah, it's it's they 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 always blame the wrong thing. They blame leftism instead of blaming authoritarianism, and the left will do the same thing. They blame 
the right instead of blaming libertar or instead of blaming uh, authoritarianism. Right. Um. It's it's wild and and these these cops, you know, they have quotas to get people arrested. Um, when I was in college, I was dating this girl, and she actually had gotten jumped. Um, and when the police were called, uh, she got jumped by some other girl. I, I'm not really too sure about what happened, but the police showed up at my house to deal with the situation and to talk to her. And I ended up getting arrested because they they smelt weed <laughs> and Man. and barged into my house, no warrant or anything, and arrested me for the weed that was in the in the house. They claimed I, it ended up getting you know thrown out. Uh, I wasn't convicted or anything, but I did end up missing my finals in college because of it, which. You know, you can't get that back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm assuming that the school was not, uh, the college was not fucking receptive to that. And they didn't do shit. No, because I had to go, I was going through the legal system, getting it thrown out. I had to um, get a lawyer. I had to spend money on a lawyer. Um, I had to go uh, end up taking a class. Um, even though I I didn't get a convicted conviction or anything like that, so by the time it was all over and it was thrown out, um, that semester was long gone. Well, that's unfortunate. And like, I mean, the other unfortunate thing is that that's pretty bad in itself, fucking up your future. The cops are doing that, not the not the weed, <laughs> fucking up your future in that way um like taking a ding out of it is a like it's a lot less than they do to other people over it like beating killing caging torturing fucking with your your associations using it as pretext for you know disarmament and uh institutionalism and a bunch of other shit like <laughs> the police absolutely destroy lives for not following the order of the state and a lot of what they do with the stuff that they seize is they just store it in their own warehouses so it's like i f fucking virulently hate this shit um but yeah they can take your property even if you're not convicted of the crime uh one one big thing that they're known to do is they arrest you, um, put you in isolation, and say that you're uh, either like uh, mentally unwell mm -hmm. or violent, which makes it harder for you to contact the outside world. And regardless of if you're convicted, let's say they can accuse you, let's say just driving a car on the crime. That car will get impounded and auctioned off mm -hmm. before you can even you know get a get a case together for defense so that there's sell your shit with regardless of if you've done anything or not and get away with it yeah they can just straight up steal from you they can stop you like a gang and frisk you down and steal your shit fucking run that shit hand it over you're on our block this is our turf fucking same mentality yeah, the largest monopoly on, of violence there is. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I guess then th that's a that's a relatively reasonable like place to what one 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 more thing. If you want the war on terror to stop, you have to stop the war on drugs. They're both linked. Like they're both about protecting international trade and a bunch of shit like that. They're both about militarism they're both about destroying you know like other countries and profiting off of the rebuilding efforts like and they both use the same forces and the same international action to get the same result which is destroyed economies for the purposes of f enforcement of western hegemony 
and getting the lowest classes hooked on substances because the societies that we're in are, you know, fucking anathema to mental health and a bunch of other shit. So these people then, it's a self-feeding cycle of addiction due to bad community um, and recidivism um, and back into addiction. Um, and all of the crime that is associated with all of that is a compound snowball effect. All of the international cartels that, that, that get affiliated with terror groups are like all a self-feeding mechanism. Um, and all of this, you know, brings me to my general point, which is sort of a response to some things some uh, dumb pieces of shit are saying to me. Uh, well, I'm, I'm an advocate of clean sobriety. How can I talk? I used to drink a shit ton. I like doing that. Um, rum was my poison of choice. Uh, like, ethanol is a drug. If anybody says that they aren't, um, that they're clean, but they're a drunk, they're lying because ethanol is a drug and it doesn't matter that your drug delivery mechanism is a liquid. Um, but I also used to be a routine, like I was a massive stoner. Um, and I also, for a bit there, smoked a whole hell of a lot of salvia. Um, oh, wow. What, what, pushed, what put me off of drugs in general was a really bad spice trip. Now, spice, for those of you who are uninitiated, spice is synthetic weed. And the point of spice is to, uh, it's, it's a bunch of leaves that you can technically smoke. Um, and these leaves that you can technically smoke are sprayed with a bunch of chemicals. And those chemicals are fuck knows what. Um, but those chemicals that, that are there um, are oftentimes actively toxic and otherwise very bad for you. And in this case, the spice trip that I was on, um, because I couldn't pop positive for weed or I might not get a job, um, like, because of the war on drugs, this weed that I was, like, this synthetic weed that I was on, it was nothing like a weed high. Nothing like it. What it was, was a roller coaster of terror when I was, like, you know, screaming no in, 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 in a yard while people were trying to fucking console me. Um, because I had lost most of my intelligence very quickly. It took not too long at all um, for me to get into a position where basically I was reduced intellectually to about the age of four. And... So I know firsthand, like from an hour and a half that felt like an entire night had passed while I slowly clawed for my brain back, that the alternative to the natural existing things that were already perfectly like, okay, um, the, the things that you have to do in order to do it legally and not pop positive so that you can like, you know, get a job, pass a drug test, do etc., live a normal life, those things have a propensity to be evil. Um, and it, it's not just that. It's also like, you know, people are, you know, trying to get their opiate fix. So what do they do? They get things that are laced with fentanyl or fentanyl itself. And this is, you know dirt quality fentanyl that's often cut with other shit as well and for some reason these people have a really bad time on that like you know <laughs> there are so many examples i could bring up of people just having the worst time on alternatives to the illegal stuff the government is actively helping those people who would poison us um and so ever since then Pretty much any drug but booze, which I've also been off for five years at this point because I moved to somewhere I didn't hate so much. Um, fucking, you know, every one of them but booze, especially weed, made me feel like I was back there screaming no in the yard <laughs> while I could barely remember basic shapes and how to speak. 
Um, so I, I, I not only have been a user of drugs, but I've been uh, users, uh, like uh, such a heavy at one point user of one of them that the really bad experience of Spice, um, an alternative to the legal stuff, uh, well, sorry, the illegal stuff, made me not want to do drugs ever again, with the exception of ethanol, which didn't make me feel enough like that to make me feel I was, r like, right smack back in that situation. Um, so, I'm not some square who's, like, coming from the outside and he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm over here with actual experience, you know, and I can tell everybody that if I was just smoking weed, that wouldn't have fucking happened. But I wasn't. And the war on drugs is the reason I wasn't. And as a result, I know firsthand the evils of prohibition. Um, you know? Uh, <laughs> and so I advocate clean sobriety, absolutely, because I think people should have a clean and clear mind so that they can fight the state. But I also personally say that, you know, like, it's, it's not up to me whether or not you do it. And I certainly oppose the government in any attempts to legislate for it. So that should answer those stupid fascist pieces of shit's questions that, like, routinely harass me over, like, literally everything. Because they think it's funny to bully people online. That's the face of quite a bit of libertarianism, just bullies. So, um, either way, <laughs> that, should, uh, that should give people an idea. Like, the war on drugs pushes people to terrible places. Absolutely terrible. Every single fucking time. And, like, the only thing that it, like, th that's proven consistently is Rat Park. This experiment where they found out that if you improve the, c the community and living conditions of the rats, they, uh, they didn't choose the cocaine water. It's not that they really liked cocaine and that everybody is predisposed to being a coke junkie. It's that uh, they gave the rats a choice, and the rats didn't want to make the bad choice when they had good options outside of an artificial feeling of positivity, outside of artificial goodness. If they could add the real goodness, the real shit, they didn't feel like they wanted to. It's almost like Government has created an evil society, um, and people use drugs to escape, and the government's only response is evil, which is all it knows. Yeah, I mean, we saw drug use go up during the pandemic. For that reason alone, people became isolated and had less things to care about. Yeah. And let's connection less community less family the the uh, antidote to drug use is not sobriety the ant the antidote the opposite of drug use the opposite of addiction is community so we need people to step up and make shit better instead of endorsing the system that makes it worse and all of the policies which concur to create just monumental evil and are dooming us to a slow death at the hands of tyrants. Um, <laughs> I think that's a relatively good place to wrap. Uh, if, if there's anything else you want to say, anything you want to shout out, anything you do, feel free to uh, do so. Oh, I just wanted to congratulate you on your sobriety. Yep. That's uh, that's amazing, man. Uh, happy for you there. Back when I lived in Daytona, I had, um, you know, I partied a lot, but I didn't have, you know, um, too much of a of a problem. But I did, I did see firsthand, you know, the problems that the war on drugs did create. Like, you, like you had mentioned, spice, you know. Um, that's literally a direct result of uh, drugs being illegal, but I'm not going to dive into that too much. Um, I, I think that what, what you said was a good place to end it. 
And um, thank you very much for having me. Anybody listening to this can follow me. I'm gonna. I'm planning a space um, in the works right now um, with Ant Cap Air and a few other people. It's gonna be on Praxis and how to actively enhance the the liberties of freedom of yourself and your community. What what you can do, like to actually get out there and start making a difference instead of you know just reading theory it's very good to get out there and put that to use and and lead by example so i'll be um announcing the space on that uh probably in the next couple days um and it'll take place in a few weeks or or something like that um but there's more information on that to come but yeah, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thank you for showing up, uh, especially on such short notice. Uh, this is Tropical Liberty on Twitter. Feel free to go follow him. This will be up on YouTube, Facebook, Odyssey, and BitChute relatively soon. Um, and yeah, these these spaces are going to be structured somewhat like this. The more the merrier. If y'all uh, want to, you know, tag the fuck out of things like this to make sure that more people know about them, so that we can get a lot of people on board, feel free to hit me up, because these things could be very good. I think I want to provide a better alternative to a variety of the spaces out there, which are just fucking asinine cancer and you know cults of personality, circle jerks, that sort of thing. So. With that being said, this was yet another edition of Anti-Spaces. Smash the fucking state.